Welcome back again to Hopeside Vespers. Indeed, uh, we have come this far by faith. This is the first week of uh, May. I hope that uh, you're all doing well. Every first week of the month is focused on social matters. Here's a quotation that you already saw, which I will share again. It says lasting solutions to many social problems will be found only as we each learn to say, I am society. That's by Mal Fletcher. I'll read again. Lasting solutions to many social problems will be found only as we each learn to say, I am society. As uh, many of you may have been following the news, there have been uh, demonstrations in many educational campuses, especially in the United States, because of what is going on in Gaza. So we can take it from what what is happening, whether we agree with what is happening or not, that we as human beings are made to be concerned about one another. No one is an island. No man is an island. What is the meaning of society? It says here in dictionary.com, the aggregate of people living together in a more or less ordered community. In fact, the Sabbath was established 
for fostering community, for worship, for fellowship, to build relationships. In fact, as I have been saying uh, uh, previously, the Sabbath is the foundation of all creation. It means a lot more than just that one day, but it is based on that one day, seven, perfection, when creation was completed. God gave a space, so that's God's space, so that everything can be refreshed, recreated, and so on and so forth. And so let us learn to remember to take care of one another. No one can tolerate some other human being being abused for too long, especially what we are seeing now in, in, in the matter of uh, protests and all that. So every first week we focus on social matters or loving one another or the golden rule, which is love your neighbor as yourself. We have to take care of our uh, community, our the creation around us, we are society. And uh, I would like to ask uh, Mrs. Virginia David to read the scripture reading for our meditation today. It is taken from 1 Samuel 15, 19. Good morning, good evening to all of you. I am Virginia from New Sweet. The verse uh, which I am going to read is taken from the context of Samuel the prophet was questioning Saul the king, the first king of Israelites. He waged war against Amalekites and returned victorious. But with law, with a loot, he came back, which God said not to. That's found in 15, 19. I'm reading from the New Century Version. Why didn't you obey the Lord? Why did you take the best things? Why did you do what the Lord said was wrong? I am also reading it from the King James Version. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? May God bless this verse as we meditate upon this verse. Let's pray. Loving and merciful Father in heaven, thank you for the good night rest and bringing us into another Sabbath morning filled with new mercies. Lord, may we be worthy to be called as your children to receive thy love that fills us with gladness. Let the mercies of God overflow into our lives. Bless each and every one of us who joined in this Zoom. Lord, bless the one who has taken initiative to conduct this program. Lord, open our hearts to receive thy word and be benefited spiritually. Bless the one who is imparting thy word from the throne of God. Help us to have receptive minds, not only as hearers, but as doers as well. Lord, let your healing and touch, let your healing and touch be there upon everyone asking for it. We are living in perilous times, Lord. Lord, if it is thine will, 
Let your second coming be soon. For I ask all these mercies in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you for offering that uh, wonderful prayer. Even though we know the speaker, Dr. S. Warakan, who is joining us from Spicer University from before, uh, I would like to request uh, Dr. Roy Jemison to introduce him again. As I was told that uh, Dr. Roy would like to say a few words about our speaker tonight. So go ahead, Roy. Thank you for uh, coming online and uh, telling us more about Dr. A.S. Warakan, who is such a dynamic and inspiring speaker, who, whom we have heard many times. Greetings to all of you and the Sabbath blessings. It is uh, indeed a happy privilege for me to introduce the speaker, uh, Dr. S. Varekan, whom I know for many years now, even from the time he first joined Spicer as a student. And I had the privilege of uh, not only being his teacher, but one with whom I associated very closely. Though he was a student of economics, I saw him to be very deeply interested in the religious subjects I used to teach, and he was a very good student. I've chosen him to be helping me work in the EG White Center. And ever since I knew him, he was such a faithful and hardworking student. I proved to be in his higher education, completed his master's and went to serve in the Northeast. And that was where I met him again and he returned to Spicer. Uh, and uh, served there on the faculty of the School of Business, held various positions. And currently he is uh, the director of examination center, a very important position in the university. And he excels in his work, but more than all, I know him to be, and as you all have heard, a very dynamic uh, speaker. And I'm sure his uh, ministry to us will be a blessing. And his family, his wife and children, very active in the church and a servant of God. And I'm happy as an ordained minister, he is fulfilling his role uh, in God's work. Dr. Varekan, I am so happy to introduce you, and uh, you will be surprised. I'm right now actually in the Northeast in Nonchalon, and uh, had the privilege to come here yesterday and this morning, not miss this opportunity to hear you. And may God bless you and each one of us as we hear the message at the beginning of our. Thank you, Roy, for introducing uh, Dr. A.S. Warakan. His message is entitled, Why Have You? And here is Dr. A.S. Warakan to present tonight's Vespers message. Good morning from India and good evening to all of you. It is such a pleasure to see you all and meet you all here online. It's been quite some time. So I was very excited when I was invited because it's always a blessing to worship with the people of God. So wonderful to be here. God has been good and I hope and pray that God has been good to all of you. Uh, it's quite early here. It's still dark outside. Dr. Roy, thank you for introducing me. Uh, I'm so happy to see you. Um, and to know that you are in notice, um, I'm, uh, you are in a beautiful part of India. And thank you for the prayer. Thank you for reading the key texts. 
thank you, uh, Sir Anand, for uh, leading out the worship. As I read the Word of God, one thing that I have come across in the Word of God is questions. And the questions asked by God to human beings, to different people, are so profound, filled with meaning. And in itself, there is so much spiritual message. It is loaded with the answers that people are searching for. So I'm not going to go into the details of the story, because I believe all of you know the story that is behind this question that was read as a key text. But I want to read the key text again. And it reads in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 19, Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord. So if you read the questions asked by God through Samuel to Saul, it is a questions or a question, or in fact two questions asked by God to Saul through Samuel So profound that I believe pierced through the heart of soul. Made him to realize what he had done. Made him to realize how he had turned away from God. Made him to realize that what he thought was wrong. Made him to realize that what he thought of doing was meaningless. And made him to realize what he thought of doing and what he had done were all against the will of the Lord. So a brief introduction of the story is, Saul was given a mission by God. Saul was chosen, anointed, empowered, and placed on the throne by God. Saul was the first king of Israel to lead the people of Israel. To lead by example. Saul was the representation of God as a leader, as a judge. Why did I say a representation of God? Because all until the time Saul was chosen, God was the leader. They could not see God, but they could feel God. They could see everything was under the control of God. But now that they demanded for a human king because they wanted to be like their neighbors, God, you know, accepted and permitted their desire to be fulfilled. That's the kind of God we serve. Sometimes we force our will on God. Push God to the corner. And God said, okay, if that is what you want, I know that is not the best for you. But if that is really what you want, I will permit you to have it. I will allow you and permit you to have it. That's the kind of God we serve. Many times in our life, we push God to the corner. We push our will on God. We pray about it and say, let's God will, let God's will be done. But we have pushed our will on him. And God said, if that is what you want, 
I know it's not the best, but since you are pushing it, I will let you have it. And so Saul was appointed as a king, chosen by God, appointed by God, anointed by God. But as I said, he was to be a leader, to be the king by example. Spiritually, he was to be an example. But I tell you, when Saul became the king, in verse 15, God instructed him through Samuel to go down to the Amalekites and destroy completely. That was the mission. I want you to read with me verse 18. Samuel told him, Now the Lord send you on a mission. What was the mission? The mission was to go to the Amalekites and destroy everything. The mission was clear. Go to the Amalekites and destroy everything. Everything. That was the mission. So read with me. Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Go. Is that not the commission given to us as disciples of Christ? Did Jesus not say, go into the ends of the earth? Let your mission begin in Jerusalem, then to Judea, then Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Saul was told, go to the Amalekites, to the sinners, and fight with them until they are consumed. That was his mission. What is our mission as disciples of Jesus? What is our mission as Christians? And to narrow it down, what is your mission as a seven-day Adventist? There is only one mission, and that is go into the world, teaching the word of God, preaching the word of God, making disciples, Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That is the only mission. That is the great commission. The mission that is given to all of us as his disciples. So Saul went to Amalekites. Saul was told to go. He went. Saul went and fought. Because he was told to go and fight. My question to all of us this morning or this evening is. We are told to go into the world. And teach and preach and make disciples. And baptize them in the name of the Father. My question is. Are we going? Are, are, or are we happy and comfortable in this comfort zone that we live in? Or are we going out like Saul? He was obedient. He went. Are we obedient to God and going? Oh, you don't have to travel across the seas, mountains and valleys. Are you teaching and preaching and making disciples in the name of the Lord? In your homes, in your neighborhoods, in your workplace, are you obedient to God? Are, or are we too busy earning money? Are we too busy holidaying? Are we too busy campaigning for positions and power? Are we too busy in entertainment? Are we too busy in trying to make a name of ourselves that we have failed to go 
and preach and teach. Let us be obedient to the word of God. And when God said go. If we are truly his servant. We will go. Sir, Saul went. So far so good. Are we going. In the name of the Lord. Saul went and fought. Are we going. And preaching. And teaching the word of God. What is your mission? What is Saul? What was Saul's mission? Did he fulfill it? Yes, thus far. Are we fulfilling the mission given to us by God? I hope so. So as Saul went, he fought. God was with him. But I want you to come back with me to verse 11. Chapter 15, verse 11, it reads, God said to Samuel, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as a king. Did Saul not go? He went. Did Saul not fight? He fought. But God said, I greatly regret that I appointed Saul as the king. You read Genesis chapter 6. And you find God regretting that he made man. Why? Because man chose to be wicked. Man chose to marry. Merry making. Eating and drinking. And in this case, so God said, I regret that I appointed Saul as the king. Oh, brethren here, will God say, I regret that I appointed so-and-so. I regret that I sent so-and-so on a mission. Why did God regret Oh, I tell you, God did not regret because Saul allowed his people to choose the most beautiful and the fatted rams for sacrifice. My question to all of us is, when we go on a mission, Obedient to God. And we go on a mission. Respond to the call of God. But are we obedient just partially? While going out. Saul and his followers. Were more concerned. About sacrifice and offerings. We're not obedient to God. 100% and in our spiritual journey, brothers and sisters, God expects 100%. There is no 99.99 .99 obedience that is good enough to God. 100% obedience, trust and belief and faith is what God expects from us. Saul went, fought, but kept aside the best of the best with the intention of offering it to God. And I want to tell you, brethren, this morning or evening, that God does not need offerings and sacrifices. God just needs your obedience. Complete surrender. Complete obedience. Nothing else. And if we don't obey God. God will say. I regret. That I place so and so. On that position. To be a leader. To be a preacher. 
to be a minister, to be a servant of God, because you fail to obey God. Let's find out from verse 11, the reason why God regretted. He says, for he has turned back from following me. Have we turned back from following God? Have we turned away from following God? When God says love one another, have we failed to love one another? Love your enemies as you love yourself. Have we failed to love our enemies? Forgive one another. Have we failed to forgive one another? Huh? God says, go to church on Sabbath. Have we failed to go to church on Sabbath and go to church on Sundays? Don't eat this. Don't drink that. Are we eating and drinking? Have we turned back from God? Are we like the children of Israel who always long to turn and go back to Egypt? And God said, I regret because he has turned back from following me. Number two, and he has not performed my commandments. What was the commandment? Go and consume the Amalekites. Did he go? He went. Did he fight? He fought. But he did he consume? No. Are you going out and preaching? Yes. Are you going into the sinful world and preaching? Yes. But the question is, have you really been following God and his mission? That is why God said, he, I regret appointing Saul because he had turned back from me. And he has failed to obey my commandments. Will God tell us that I regret because he is not following me? He has turned back from me and he has not kept my commandments. And I tell you, if you see the shadows of your life every day, remember God is behind you. God said, I am the light of the world. And when the light is behind you, your shadows will fall in front of you. And that is why you see your shadows. Because you have told God to stay behind. And you want to lead the way. If you are seeing tribulations and troubles and challenges in your life only. And you are seeing this darkness in front of you. That is because you are not allowing God to lead you. The law of science is and the law of nature is simple. Light behind you, shadow falls in front of you. The light in front of you, shadow falls behind you. And you don't see it unless you turn back. You know, amazing God. And so God asked through Samuel to Saul, why did you, then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? And that question is to all of us today. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Number two, why did you swoop down on the spoil Saul and his followers went down and collected the best of the best, accumulating it for themselves and do evil in the sight of the Lord. Disobedience is an abomination and an evil in the sight of the Lord. To swoop down and get that spoil of the sinful world too busy collecting, accumulating wealth. Too busy making a name for ourselves. Too busy 
trying to occupy a chair and position and power is a spoil. And that is evil in the sight of the Lord. All that God wants us to do is to obey the voice of the Lord. And so you, you look at verse 20. Saul said, but. You know when we use the word but. We are trying to justify what we have done. We have not realized that we have made a mistake. And many times we do this, isn't it? When you are called for an explanation, we say, but. And so said, but I have done. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on a mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agag, king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Saul wanted to justify his actions. He said, I went on a mission. I utterly destroyed them. And I obeyed the voice of the Lord. Is Saul not justifying? And how many times we have answered to God like Saul? But I work in the mission. But I became a pastor in the village. I struggled. I did this. I did that. I did this. We list down all the things that we do. To God, isn't it? To work our salvation. I gave so much offering. I built so many churches. I have sponsored so many children. But all that we do is like filthy rags to God. All that we need to do is obey and listen to the voice of God. And so tried, Saul tried to justify. But in his justification statements, he brought that mistake that he did. He said, I brought the king of Amalekites, Akak. God told him, go and destroy everything. God never told him, bring the spoil for sacrifice. God never told him, bring the king, Agak. God simply said, destroy. Human judgment, human reasoning is what the greatest challenge to our spiritual growth in executing the mission of God. The Christian dome today struggles because of human reasoning. I listen to his voice. I read the word of God. But I thought sacrifice was good. That's what Saul means. I did what needed to be done. But I thought bringing King Akkad for sacrifice would be good. I read the word of God. I know what is true. But I think worshiping on Sunday is good. I read the word of God and I know what to eat and what not to eat. But the world science, the science world says this. And I think, I think and I thought is the problem. Reasoning of man. Faith begins when reason ends. When you stop reasoning the word of God, but you follow as it is given, that is faith. And obedience. And you know what? If you read verse 16. Samuel turned to him and he said. Be quiet. The more you say. The more problem you're getting into. Be quiet and listen. And I'm telling you. God is telling all of us today. Be still and be quiet. And listen to my still voice. Remember the experience of Elijah. As he ran for his life. God told him, get inside the cave. He got inside. God said, what are you doing here in the cave? Come out at the, at the mouth of the cave. There was earthquake. There was fire. There was storm. God was not there. God was there in the stillness and quietness. Can you hear the voice of God today? 
And so Samuel went on to tell Saul, and read with me verse 22. Has the Lord a great, a great delight in the burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Wow. Samuel is telling Saul, God have no delight. God does not need your offerings and sacrifice, but he needs your obedience. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of the rams. To obey and listen is better than sacrifice. Many times we think we can buy our salvation, isn't it? We break all the commandments of God all through the week. On Sabbath day, we bring fat tithes. We bring fat offerings and we think we can wash away all that we have done against the will of the Lord in the past six days. The Lord says it is better to obey and to heed than sacrifice. Let's read verse 23 and I'll close with this. And two sins and iniquities God points out here. And he says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. To be rebellious and to be stubborn is sin. Knowing what God wants us to do. Knowing what God wants us to be. If we go against it, that is rebellious nature. If we go against it, that is stubbornness, isn't it? If you tell your children, do this, and they don't, is it not being stubborn? You tell your fellow workers, do this, and they don't. That's rebellion. And so when God tells us to do or not to do, and we go against it, that is rebellion against God. That is being stubborn. And that is sin. That is iniquity. And if we are rebellious, if we are stubborn, God will say, I regret greatly. And so I leave each one of us this morning or this evening with this question. Why then did you not listen and obey the voice of the Lord? Why then did you swoop down? Why then did you go down so low? In your spiritual life to enjoy the spoil of this world. To enjoy this sinful entertainment and wealth and positions and glamour. Why then did you swoop down to enjoy the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? It is my prayer, brethren, that God will not regret choosing us, calling us. Because we have turned our back to him. Because we have not obeyed his commandments. May we choose to be obedient over sacrifice. May we not be rebellious. May we not be stubborn. But may we be obedient to God in our spiritual journey and experience. That instead of God saying, I regret that I called him. I regret that I appointed him. God will say, well done, good and faithful servant. May that be our experience today. Happy Sabbath. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Wanakin, for that very powerful and solemn message. Indeed, can we disobey God and find grace in his sight? Can we knowingly or willfully disobey God and then find favor or grace uh, in God's sight? God will give time to turn around. And let's not mistake that for anything else except that God wants us to ultimately follow him. 
follow the faith that we may proclaim publicly. Thank you again for the great message. Oh, we have some prayer requests. Thank you. And happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, Beth. Thank you for joining. Yes. I just wanted to add to uh, Brother Varak and um, it says Psalm 27, 14. It says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. So in the still small voice, we have to wait. Indeed, you said it very right. We are called to wait. Yeah, like when the brother was making that point on how the um, in the Bible in First Samuel uh, Saul didn't wait. Um, it's just an example to us. We have to wait on the Lord. It's it takes a lot of patience, but we do. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Indeed, it takes faith and patience. Faith uh -huh. and, and trust. And trust, indeed. It makes us want to sing trust and obey, for there's no other way. Amen. Trust and resting in God goes together. Thank you for bringing those points. You know, Amen. the... Prayer requests, uh, Dr. Warakan, if you can remember all of these, I will read them. For healing, Mrs. Boopy Samuel, Mrs. Julie Dondaparty, Mrs. Mary Naka, Mr. T. Arudas, Mr. Mesfin, Mr. Kelly Padapodi, Mr. Dean Hodgson, Harold Injati, who is reported to be doing better and well and Dr. John Fowler. Raul Enrique is five years and is diagnosed with leukemia. He needs our prayers for healing. Please remember little Raul Enrique. The Walking with Jesus Children's uh, Storybook Project. Please continue to pray so that uh, an illustrator Amen. can be found. Amen. Pray for the Hope Side Church and its growth. And of course, the building project, we are seeing growth in Pakistan. That's why we have had the last two months um, of great reporting about how miraculously the truth of the Sabbath has uh, taken root. And now 300 were baptized last week. And I put that on uh, YouTube channel, go and see. It is very inspiring to see all these people giving their lives to Christ and especially Jesus, including the Sabbath, I said. So they Amen. were witnessed by Adventist pastors in front of uh, Doug Bachelor. I don't know how all these things came together. And we were told that they will, they will belong to the Hope Side Gojra Church in Gojra, Pakistan. So uh, we thank God for all these things that are happening. Uh, please pray for the growth and establishment of the church over there in Pakistan. And uh, I would like to now ask uh, Dr. Warakan to offer the closing prayer. Uh, just one more uh, uh, point I would like to make. Uh, somebody commented on our YouTube channel and said, uh, well, you know, how do we know or uh, something to that effect uh, uh, about uh, the the validity of uh, the baptism and uh, all those things. So I said to that brother, and I'm saying that now, uh, anyone who is getting baptized, it is between them and God. It's a very personal thing. It is not for us to second guess. The same thing applies. Anyone who goes to church or gets baptized in a church building, it is not for us to second guess as to, you know, are they doing it for real or uh, is the Holy Spirit uh, on them or not? It is not for us to judge. Spiritual Amen. matter between each person and their God. God is the one who is in charge of their salvation. The best we can do is pray for them, 
that they will be established in the truth. And it's not easy, uh, especially people from Pakistan taking a bold stand like that. You can go and uh, watch that yourself. So Dr. Warakan, please offer the closing prayer. Shall we pray to our God? O oh, loving Father in heaven, God who is merciful and gracious, a God who does not see our sin, but see a sinner who needs salvation, a God who gave up the glory of heaven to die a shameful death on the cross, that we might have hope of life. We thank you, Lord, for this holy Sabbath day that you made for us as men. We thank you for being the Lord of the Sabbath and that we can worship and spend time with you on the Sabbath day. But we will always be reminded that this Sabbath culminates on the seventh day because we obeyed you by working faithfully the past six days. For your commandment have said, for in six days the heavens and the earth, <laughs> and you want us to work six days and rest on the seventh day. Lord, this evening, this morning, on this Sabbath day, we pray for our brethren who are not keeping well physically. We pray for all those who are sick and request your healing lord we pray for mrs mary naka mr arudas mrs mr mesfin mr kelly mr dean mrs julie mrs mary harold Engedy, dr john fowler and little raul Enric. Lord, I pray that you will touch them with your healing hand. You are the greatest physician because you created each one of us. You just need to proclaim. You just need to touch them, Lord. And that is what you have promised to us. You call upon my name, believing in prayer, and all the desires of your heart, I will give it to you. And we thank you for that promise. And we, in fact, thank you for the promise that you will heal them. We also place the project of printing that literature, that book. We pray that you will provide the money that is needed, that the book will come to fruition and it will go around the world into many homes it will bring souls to the foot of the cross. So please bless the project. We pray for the project of the, the church that is to be constructed. The Hope Side Church. Lord, what is there that you cannot do? Heaven and earth were created by proclamation. You could calm the storm with just three words. You could, you could heal the sick. You could raise the dead. And therefore we believe, Lord, that you will construct the church. May a beautiful church come up for your honor and glory. That your children can have a place to spend time with you. We know, Lord, that you are everywhere. But you have also told the children of Israel, make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Did you not tell the children of Israel down the history, you have made palaces for yourself, but where is the place for me to dwell? And so as they plan and pray for the construction of the Hope Side Church, I pray that you will provide them the things that they need, the land, the material things, the money, that a beautiful century would be constructed. That the children of God can worship you and praise you 
and come together as brethren to fellowship. Lord, I place all these prayers in your hand. I pray for everyone present here this morning or this evening, worshiping you. We thank you for reminding us that you expect only obedience, trust, and belief. May we never turn our back on you. May we always be obedient to your commandments and go on a mission, preaching, teaching, and living life, always remembering that for some, our life may be the only scripture that they would ever read. May we live and choose consciously to be like you, to choose to follow you. Bless us all with the Sabbath blessing. We place our life into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all for joining. It was a wonderful time of uh, worship and fellowship. And uh, I'd like to thank Dr. S. Warakin for giving the great message. Yes. Mr. Wes James from California will give the message. That is May 10, Friday, May 10, next week. Please join us again. And so now let us meet and greet one another. Happy Sabbath to all of you and God bless you all. It was my blessing to be here. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Varakan, for always supporting Hopeside Church and for giving us inspiring messages. Today's was a wonderful message. I'm sure we all are blessed. Happy Sabbath to all. Amen. Where do you want to build the Hope Side Church? Thank you for asking. Uh, ideally, we'd like to build it uh, near the Adventist yeah. Hospital, which is about five minutes away from where I live here in uh, Hyattsville or Silver Spring. That that's located in Silver Springs. So. Oh, I see. It's not in India or anywhere. No, it's right here in the U.S. Oh, so, amen. We yeah. need it. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, uh, if you want to know, uh, you know the great building, uh, community center, as I'm calling it. Of course, there'll be church in that. Uh, you can go to hopeside.com. Okay. Dot org is the church website. If you want to see the pictures, uh, uh, I I don't show all the pictures, but at least you'll see some pictures. Yeah, I will get an idea. Yeah, so oh. the, it, it's a very, uh, 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 of course, beautiful, and it is meant to be self-sustaining, green tech, and all that. The idea is that uh, it should have a money-making uh, or revenue-generating model. You know, so I'm calling it the community center so that we can support work in other places. Uh, yeah. course, you know, because uh, <clears throat> uh, we, we, we could build a smaller or uh, look into a smaller location somewhere. Um, but as God, God wills, you know, small, big, medium, whatever. But uh, after we lost our church because we are Sabbath keepers. Yeah. Three years ago, this is what God revealed to me. This is what I'm saying. <clears throat> uh, this idea came and I was able to get an architect from Italy to do this for a very, very low price. Oh, beautiful. And uh, so it, it can be here, it can be in India, it can be anywhere. In fact, in Pakistan, they're, they're so excited to want to attempt to build something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a model. Yeah. From the so, Lord, from, a model from heaven. Exactly. So uh, it can, of course, I would like it to be here, but that land that we're looking at, it's not for sale, but there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> land, uh, 300 acres, and uh, supposed to be a place where science uh, hub is supposed to come, but has been delayed for seven or more years. But somehow I feel God led me to that place. I saw the blueprint. They don't have a church or a community center. 
in such a beautiful location. So I'm suggesting something like that. And um, oh, amen. So uh, we'll see. We're praying for that. But if not here, it can be anywhere else. Just think, you can have health lectures there, all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah yes, indeed. It, it is meant really for the community to come and be. Uh, and hear, hear the truth. Exactly. Uh, you know, our goal is to meet the needs of the community in many different ways. All right. Thank you. In a you. beautiful location. I mean, a beautiful building, so to speak. It's actually three buildings in one. Wow. Uh, separate, but they're connected uh, from the air aerial view. When you look at it, it's somewhat like three crosses, three buildings. Yeah. So that is in the shape of our own logo, which is a very simple three cross logo. Uh-huh. So well, God revealed this that to me, and so we're trying. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for asking and encouraging. Oh, and one more question. Uh, who, spons uh, who is a sponsor for the little children's book? Uh, Actually, the money has already been collected uh -huh. from various people here and in India as well. They're looking for an uh, illustrator. Yeah. So that's the hang up. It's really not the money. They collected about $5,000. Through the church? Yeah, through Hope Side. <clears throat> oh, Hope Side. All right. Well, we'll pray about that. Thank you. Yeah. Pray that uh, they will find an illustrator in India, in Pona, India. That's yeah. Right. I'll tell Sue Hana to pray too. She probably already knows. She, okay. Sue Hana is with the Pathfinders this weekend. Yeah, thank you for, yes, praying and, uh, you know, we hope that uh, breakthrough can happen. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Okay, anybody else? If not, uh, since it's very early for Dr. Ayers, what I can there in Spice University, beautiful place. We'll say good night to all. Thank you, Dr. Wyken, and we hope to meet you again.